Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, live from New York. It's me, it's Alex, and it's the Ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight. Guess who we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Bubs. The also, the also attractive Alex Bennett. Now, the... I think the Alzheimer's ridden Alex Bennett. <laughs> I was supposed to call Larry today. Uh, we usually do it about 1 o'clock in the mm-hmm. afternoon here in New York, 10 o'clock his time, and all of a sudden I get a message that says, no show today? <laughs> and I went, oh, my God, I fucked up again. Ugh. You know, this happens a lot. You know, I, I've gotten to the point, and I never used to do this, where I put an alert in my in the thing saying, you know, let me know when I've got to do something. And it didn't give me an alert today. So the alert might not have been on. Had it been, I would have done it, you know. But uh, here I am, and there you are, and so what's new? Could have been because the uh, daylight savings time, the time changes, fucked up everyone's mind. Yeah, I forgot when it's, uh, like, when it's... uh, uh, five o'clock in the afternoon here. It's 1957 in California. Yeah, yeah. So that's the old joke. So I thought I'd just do it now. Um, and it, and that does throw. Does it throw you off? Oh, it does. Yeah. It, it, an hour out of your life. An hour out of a day is a big hunk of uh, time. So, uh, and I, I've read many reports and studies that show that there's accidents and heart attacks that were always rise after. A, the heart attacks. The time change. I've heard, I've heard about heart attacks and so on. Yeah. Yeah. A get, lot of accidents too. Get sicker and sicker. Anyway, so and it's funny, you know. I get. I just. It just hit me. So my. We have a good friend <clears throat> named Paula, and she went to went to the hospital not feeling well. Turned out she had a hernia, and they had to operate on her. Okay, right then and there. Uh, and I said to Marjorie, I said, that's something. I said, because hernias are no, no big, you know, no small deal. I said, Bubbles has to have a hernia operation. And I explained your situation. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I looked down at my clock, uh, at my phone, and there's a message from you saying, you know, basically, no show today. <laughs> so I was talking about you at the same time you were sending the message. Wow. That's a... Uh... I yeah. think Carl Jung had something like that happen, which started his whole series about there's no coincidences that we're all interconnected. And well, the thing is that somebody the other day, something happened, and they said, we, we met up with some people in the street, okay, that we had been talking to earlier, and somehow we wound up bumping into each other again. Yeah. And the woman said, what are the chances of that happening? And I said, 100%. <laughs> great answer you know and the question is what are the chances that I'd be talking about you and all of a sudden I get a hundred percent it will happen sometime the chances were nil before the coincidence happened once the coincidence happens the chances are a hundred percent exactly see how smart I am isn't that nice so like uh, uh, that someone said the odds of winning a lottery ticket are uh one and two, because you either will or you won't. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Although I like it when they say, well, tonight's lottery is $1 billion. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, your chances of winning are one in 400 trillion. And I'm going, exactly. yeah, so uh, what are you trying to do? Depress me? You know? Oh, the odds on those are just uh, staggering. So. I figure. I figure if I, um, um, uh, what, was, what was the thing that I was, uh, I was thinking, I was just looking at my watch because somebody sent me a message all of a sudden, and I can't, I can't do two things at the same time anymore. Anyway, um, 
And what were we, what were we talking about? Oh, the lottery. Oh, the lottery, yeah. Um, you know, I would love to win that lottery. That would be wonderful. But I don't know how I'd spend all that money before I drop dead. If you won a billion dollars, would you tell anyone? Listen, I, uh, I came into some money because somebody died and left me some money. Okay? And I be made the big mistake I'm mentioning it to somebody. And you know what the next, next words were out of his mouth? Bro, can like, you give me a loan? Can you give me $10,000? That was the first thing. Not congratulations, <laughs> not the, hey, that's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. I'm so sad for your friend having to go, you know, and I, I am too. I'd rather not be getting the money. Uh, but the first words out of his mouth were, you know, and I haven't wanted to talk to him since. You know, because I just, it just, and then another person I knew who knew this person who didn't get mentioned in the will said, uh, uh, could you give me some of that? Jesus. I deserve it. And I went, what? I'm, I'm not telling anybody about this no. money, you know? And by the way, those people who are listening to this program right now, do not write me an email saying where's the money. <laughs> well, if, if you want a billion dollars, my God, the, the charities and scam artists will be hammering your door. It'd be unbelievable. Well, you get a million. Let, let's say you win the. Oh, let's say you win the seven hundred million dollar lottery. That's. Mm -hmm. a, that, I'd say that's a good amount of money. <clears throat> what you get out of that is maybe about three hundred fifty million. All right. So now the question is, what do you do with that tax free three hundred and fifty million? And um, first thing I would do was would give you ten million, just you, so that you don't have to ever work again. That would be nice. And it will only be based on one thing, that you get high-speed Internet. <laughs> I could buy the Internet with that. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Uh, My, Rob, a guy by the name of um, one of the best interviews I've ever heard. What is that? I don't want to hear that. My, that's my... Old uh, producer at uh, Sirius XM, Albert Reynoso, sends me a thing. I'm sending you a thing of the best interview I've ever heard. Oh well, it probably isn't one of mine. So, <laughs> but I, but he wanted you to hear it. <laughs> so I've been putting together. You know, I have this uh, Roku channel. What's a mm -hmm. Roku? Right? You you know what Roku is, don't you? I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah, I have a Roku channel, and I have a lot of videos. I just put another thirty videos up there, and you're on a lot of them. Really? Oh, yeah. There was, you know, there's one thing where I shot a, uh, 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 we did a, a, what do you call it? A, uh, I did a, a shoot at the morning show. Just, you know, you and Mar and uh, Lori doing her stuff and so on and so forth. And uh, you're on that, you know. And I'm trying so to So that would have been the 80s? God, uh, yes, it would have to be 80s. Yeah. It would could, have to could be. Could you tell where it was? Well, it was in the studio. Oh, in the studio. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I did one for Rooster Tea Feathers, but I can't remember the date on it. Uh, I can tell you. It so was, watch uh, this, folks. Watch this. Okay, go ahead. It would have been... It would be, It was 96. It was probably March. Was I still... Wait a minute. I wasn't still at the state. Was I still at the station at night? And I, I didn't, I didn't come down because at the time the guy at Roosters wasn't booking me, so I stayed in the studio. And the, you guys are staying at a hotel called the Maple Tree, and I kept calling it the Maple Thorpe. You remember <laughs> yes, this? Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, Ke uh, let's see. Kevin Meany was on that show. Tom mm -hmm. Kenny was on that show, and uh, Will Durst was on that show. Okay. And there's one other person, but I can't remember who now. But anyway, that was that was that, that show. Yeah, it was and it was when nine. Uh, you have a date? Are you thinking you remember a date on? Can't remember a date. I know it was ninety six, and I'm pretty sure it was a spring. But I sh I should know the month, but I can't really quite recall it. Now, when did I leave Live One Hundred Five for the last time? Was July that, of ninety seven? It was ninety seven. Okay, because mm -hmm. I uh, I ha I should have to call you for all these dates. You know. Yeah, it's good to write those dates down. So because it's uh. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you look at something and you remember, oh my God, I can't believe it was ten years ago. And then I did one with Larry King at the Marriott Hotel. Were you with that one? No. No. Do you remember when it was? I do not. No. Oh, okay. All right. Same. 
I'm trying. I just have to put sometimes put the date year on it uh, so that I you know it shows up. I don't have to put it, but I do. You know. But anyway, so there was. So I've been spending a lot of time with you uh, over the last uh, week or so. Well, I remember those uh, those morning shows were great. We'd go to a, normally a comedy club and at 6 in the morning, and you'd have a live show and music, and it was fantastic. No, it was wonderful what we did. I, I, those shows, you know. You know who I was talking to yesterday? Do you remember Ed Cramp? Yeah, the yeah. general manager. Yeah, he called my show yesterday, the Monday show. Really? Do. Yeah. And, uh, uh, did he ask for money? No. No, he didn't. Uh, no, but he was very, he was very complimentary about me. He said, uh, uh, the, the best per the, the, the best talent he ever worked with was me, you know, for uh, just a sheer talent or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was the best talent he ever worked with. And then he fired me, you know, once then there, he was the guy that fired me and he said it was the biggest mistake of my career. So. Wow. Yeah. And did he hire you? Was he the one that hired you back? No, too? then they had another. They, he was no longer the general manager by the time I came back, and it was uh, it was Pat McNally. McNally, okay. Yeah, who was a, was a great guy, and uh, he decided he wanted to get the gang back together again. You know, I remember that. And uh, so he did, and uh, it was uh, you know I, I worked there for another what uh, five years, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was and shorter, but it was about five years. Let's see, you came back in, 90, in 91 to 97, six years. Yeah, first time I was on Live 105, I think, was was it 95? Or, no, Live 105 was uh, February of 86. 86. Yes, yeah, what I say, 96. 86. Uh, okay, because I was at, at, I was at the at KML for two years, and then I went to the quake for about a year, and then there was a hiatus, and then I came back. Right, and, I came and then you came to uh, Live 105, which I think at the time was the maybe the third modern rock station in the country, and nobody thought they were going to work. No, they, they didn't. It, it wasn't modern rock when I went there. What happened was is they decided they were going to go modern rock once I got there. Yeah, and because, nobody thought it would work, and because it was, it was the, the, huge. Because the modern rock format would work better with my show and I I actually loved it I love that modern rock stuff I thought it was I, I didn't mind it when I had to play some of it okay so, mm -hmm. so it was pretty good pretty damn good um, yeah you remember dates beautifully uh, you know I mean very special very special uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember that that first month you were on Live 105. I had I did a show at the Stone in it was Valentine's Day of eighty you mean February eighty six. You mean the Keystone? At the Keystone, it was yeah. raining like hell. It was Ellen DeGeneres is Valentine's, and it was me and Warren Thomas and uh, Milt Abel. Yeah, but not, it wasn't a show I was doing, right? No, it was a, it was. A, I don't know who produced that show, but no, you were. That was not one of yours. Although yeah. I did one. July that year with you at the Keystone, which is that was a cool room. In yeah, Palo this, was a, this was down in uh, Palo Alto. Yeah, and uh, it was a very, very nice venue. It held uh, what uh, seven hundred, eight hundred people, something like that. I don't at know. least six. Yeah, was, yeah, and uh, it had a nice stage and everything, so you could do a really good show there. You know, uh, I do remember, however, I can't think maybe maybe it was Keystone. There was one theater we played. Did the Keystone have a ramp going up to the stage? I think the it side? did. It looked on like a, it looked like a gigantic. The place looked like a gigantic Quonset hut. Yeah, I mean. on, the, on the side of the stage there was this ramp going up, kind of like yeah. a tunnel, but not really a tunnel. And I remember Feldman. You know, I had Feldman on this show that mm -hmm. I was doing, and I you know he was complaining about one thing and another and another and another, and I said, "Oh, well, excuse me, I got to go." up to the stage uh, to uh, introduce you. And uh, he said, okay. So I leave. And all of a sudden, I, that day, I had had the worst attack of gas <laughs> that I had ever had. I mean, it was just humongous. So I figured, I think I'll leave something for him to have to walk through. <laughs> and as I'm walking up this ramp, I am farting all the way up the ramp. 
All right? And, and by the way, I could smell them, and they were terrible. Okay? And I, and I started farting like crazy all the way up to the ramp. And then I went on the stage, and I said, thank you very much, whoever was on stage. And ladies and gentlemen, next is a great comic. And I, off to the side of me, I hear, oh, my God. God. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Daddy, ladies and gentlemen, it's David Feldman. And Feldman so comes hilarious. staggering out onto the <laughs> stage. And I said, as I walked by him, I said, you, Do you like that? I left yeah. a little something for you. That was wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I will never forget that. That was that was one of the best uh, gags I pulled on anybody when I was doing a show. The other one was uh, we were at a we were doing a show in I think it was Petaluma, uh, and um, one of the things we did there at the show at Petaluma is we said anybody who comes and brings a cow will be let in for free, and somebody brought a calf. Came wow. right on stage, brought the calf. I we let him in free, but Bobby Slayton was on the show, and I was having to stall for time because he wasn't there. Now he was always pretty good at being on time, and I don't know what the hell happened to him. And I so I said to the audience, I said, I don't know our next act, and the only one left, of course, because he was the top of the bill, is uh, is Bobby Slayton, but he's not here yet. I said, so I want to get even with him. So do me a favor, everybody. When he, I'm going to introduce him. You know he's a great comic. You know he's very funny. But I'm going to introduce him and suppress everything you possibly can and make sure you don't laugh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I notice out of the side of my eye, there's, there's Bobby Slayton. So I go, and ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Bobby Slayton. And out in the audience, you hear one guy going. <laughs> <laughs> And then he comes on and starts his act, and nobody's... All of a sudden, it's like a deer in the headlights. I mean, what would you do if you went on stage and nobody was laughing, even at your best I would, material? I would panic. You wouldn't know what was going on. And finally, he goes on for about, I don't know, two, three minutes, and he all of a sudden realizes there's something weird because he's not getting this feedback at all. And uh, I... Uh, um, um, he said he looks out at the audience and he says, I thought I was better than that. <laughs> and they all started to laugh and then I came out and I said, We I told him not to laugh at you because you were late and they, so he get, went on with the ash. Hey, he did a great show, you know. But that was one of my little gags to pull on. I you, think it would actually be hard not to laugh at Slate and Yeah. Yeah. And some few people did actually. You know, they couldn't they couldn't suppress it. Um it was like a bad episode of Make Me Laugh. Remember that show? <laughs> yes, I did that show a few times. Did you really do it? Yeah. It was like it was the dumbest show, but it was actually kind of fun to do for some reason. Well, because I mean you you're looking you're standing right there. This show, in case people don't remember the show, uh I can't even remember who hosted it. Um, it was Mark Cohen when I did it and uh Marty Yeah, Cohen? you'd come out and somebody'd be sitting in a chair, you would stand in front of them and do your yeah. like two minutes of your act. <laughs> yeah, and it was called Make Me Laugh. And what they had to do was spend those two minutes up close to you while you're doing jokes mm -hmm. to them and not laugh. And if they could go the two minutes without laughing, they got, you know, what, you know Tell them what kind of gift we got for them, Bobby. Anyway, you know, they gave him some kind of prize. And um, you were on that show. Did, yeah. Did you make them laugh? I did like a few of them. Did you make them laugh? I did, yeah. You know, what, how? What kind of material were you doing to make them laugh? I was just firing one real quick one-liners because you had like, I think it was like 90 seconds to get them to laugh. And then uh, I did a couple of shows with Feldman. We did... Uh, we did a bunch of uh, hooker jokes, I think, that went over pretty well. Uh, hooker jokes on a national TV show? Yes. <laughs> oh, we did some I couldn't believe we got away with. Uh, what was it? Uh, got my girlfriend an electronic leaf removal device. Blow her after she rakes the yard. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, yeah, there were a whole bunch of those, weren't they? Um, yeah, and I, I just remember when we, when we did that one, Mark Cohen, the host, just went, "Wow!" <laughs> like, I, I went, couldn't believe we did. It. What was it? I went to uh, I went to Rhode Island. Uh, what was what was the town there? Uh, um, oh God, there's a town that has a horrible name. Uh, no, you, you know, you had, you had a whole bunch of those. Yeah, got a girlfriend in Maine, banger. Yeah. I wouldn't go that far for a kiss. <laughs> yeah, okay. See? That, that's yeah, what I was they're thinking. They're funny because they're so fucking stupid. But. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I remember. That was the town I was trying to think of, banger in Maine. Yeah, yeah. banger. Yeah. Can you think any, of any more of those jokes? Oh, yeah. I, uh, gosh, let's see. Uh, I'm having you do material here. Go ahead. Saw a sick elephant at a zoo in Alabama, Tuscaloosa. No, I think it was a gum infection. <laughs> oh, jeez, almighty! And I think these are variations. I think these jokes have probably been around for like 300 years. Oh, yeah. They're, they're fun to do. So. Oh, the first time anybody went to Bangor, Maine, I'm sure they said something about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bangor? No. You? That's the other <laughs> way. <laughs> Oh, boy. Those were the days. We had fun, didn't we? Yeah, I want to do another morning show. Come out here. We'll do a morning show. Yeah, you got a radio station to do it on? Oh, they brought back Live 105, didn't they? Uh, yeah, nobody knew it, but I mean, <laughs> or still knows well, it. I, I, don't, I, I, I was telling uh, Cramp yesterday that I don't understand that. Okay, I don't understand why they think that when they made the mistake of getting rid of Live 105... By saying we're bringing back Live 105, they don't have any real idea of the original Live 105 and what it was all about and why people loved it. And it was because it was a very experimental, wild, loose radio station. Yeah. Uh, then it became less than that when, you know, they started getting corporate masters and it didn't go as well. But to suddenly say, we made a mistake, we're bringing back Live 105, when you're not bringing back Live 105, you're just bringing back the name. And I think and that's, that's all, yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of, what can we call it? Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? I can't think of anything. De right deceptive? Now. Deceptive, yeah. I'd say that's a, as good a word as any to describe it. Because you're saying to people, you know, if, if you're going to bring back, bring back Live 105, I didn't get the call. You know, Big Rick Stewart didn't get the call. All these people that work there didn't get the call. They just got a bunch of disc jockeys to come in and pre-record their intros uh, so they don't have to pay them more than the time they spend to record the intros. You know, and then they run it on a, on a computer. So, I mean... It would have been great if they brought the old guys back. Well, you know, we uh, when, I, when, when uh, he mentioned, you know, if you did your show again in San Francisco, it would be a big success. And I said to him, I said, we could never do it. Because times have changed, and I couldn't do that kind of show. Uh, what, we're going to let 50 people come into the studio and, you know, <laughs> take the chance of them stealing... Bringing a bomb in. <laughs> or, or, or at the very least, stealing staplers or whatever, or, you know, scotch tape. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, in the old days, we could let 50 people into a studio, and we had no problem. There was no problem. You, know? you could uh, probably not say half the things we used to say. Oh, you're absolutely correct, my friend. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, well, I mean, some of the material we did we couldn't do today because it would be considered sexist and inappropriate right. and, uh, you know. But uh, I, I, you know, I... I loved that show. I loved what we did on that show. And people say, you got to come back and do it again. And I said, can't do it. I just can't do it. It wouldn't work. You know. Uh, and we well, got, you could come back. We could do just a couple of nights at a reunion like at Cobbs. That'd be fun. They talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, let me let me see what's happening. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to get some dough to take a lot of traveling. And we might make one of our travels out there. And if we want to set something like that up, we could do it. It certainly, I think, could at least for one night make a club a lot of money. You know, the oh yeah, uh, it would it would sell out. You'd probably sell out the, Friday. Yeah, probably do two shows Friday, Saturday, sell yeah. them all out. Anyway, it looks like we've run out of time here. 
Do we uh, have? Yes, we got about uh, oh about fifty seconds left. Oh, so good. tell us, are you playing anywhere? I am working with uh, the great Felipe Esparza at the end of the month down at Santa Barbara. And yeah, and, they, and he loves having you open for him. Yeah, and he actually got me in. He's got a show, and he's putting me in at the um, Netflix is a joke festival in L.A. in May, which is uh, oh good, terrific. That's kind of a it's well, it's not a not for me. It's yeah. not a big deal, but I mean, it's I think that's like every big comic in the world will be in that town for that. So. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we got to go. We'll see you next okay. week. And thank you so much for putting up with me today and forgetting to call you. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, God, I hope you didn't die. So uh, uh, well, uh, that's always possible. I'm still, <laughs> I'm not room temperature yet. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bubs. Uh, let me turn on my lights here. There we go. Uh, I keep forgetting something all the time now. That's just the way I am, okay? Anyway, how are you? How you doing? Are you doing okay, everybody? You all right? Okay, good. Uh, let me see here. Uh, what do we got to do? What do we got to do? We got to uh, finish... Um, getting everything set up here okay we're good and uh, uh, I'm feeling loopy today I don't know why anyway let's go to our panel here bring them in so that we can uh, uh, talk to them and see how they are there they are they're all coming up there's uh, oh Scott Boddicker geez Scott and you the picture looks great you must be somewhere else aren't you I'm in Plano. I'm oh, in you're Plano. in Plano? Oh. But, but I have a new computer, so that's one of the reasons I haven't been ah. checking in lately. Why, why, uh, why, why haven't you been checking in? Because you couldn't get it to work? No, well, no, no. The, it's, uh, well, the old computer died, so I well, just, I just been, yeah, I mean, well, it didn't die. The battery just went, they go out. So what kind of computer did you get? I got, I got a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Oh, good for you. Good it's nice. You. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. The picture looks terrific. You know, it's nice and steady. It's solid. I got light on this time, too. Yeah. What went wrong with the other computer? Was it a Mac as well? Oh, yeah. It was a 13-inch. And how MacBook long Pro. did you have that? I I just I looked that up. I bought it in April of uh, 2014. 2014. So that's, that's it was 10. 10 it was years 10. old. And that was the only only battery in there. Yeah, yeah I have so. a Mac here that's uh, but gee, 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 what was it? it? Was a Mac Pro from I can't remember when, but the uh, it was amazing. You yeah, know, no, it, it just great, kept going and kept going. And occasionally I'd have to replace things, but it was just plug and play. You pull thing out, or you need a new uh, uh, oh. uh, power supply. Yeah, you just threw and throw a new some power supply in there, and that thing that that was God. I, I think that thing goes back to t 2010, and uh, it's still working if I want to fire her up. So, you know, great. Anyway, hello to uh, Charlie. Good to see you, Charles. See, I'm being very, very proper. And, of course, Josh, good to see you. And look who's here. Oh, my God, as I live and breathe, Mark Thorner. He's in Wacky Land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that was Porky in Wacky Land, right? Yes, it is. That was a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. See, I know such things. And Tom Yamaguchi. Wow, what a great crowd we got here tonight. This is like the intelligent crowd. I, I know, I know. Brian, Brian Brian's going to call. We'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, we'll yeah, the judge. But no, the, Brian will call up and say, what am I, mincemeat? You know, I mean, you know, no, he's intelligent too. Um, just a, Actually, most of our callers now are pretty good on this show. Um, but uh, then there aren't a lot of them either, so whatever. But here we got a whole bunch of people we haven't seen in a long time. What are you doing, Mark? What's new? Oh, still working. Still lurking about. You that's my life right now. Uh, Still lurking about. What do you? What uh, kind of work are you doing now? Same as before. Yeah. Uh, I just don't put that out on social media. Yeah, 
But it's, is it a good job? You're happy with it? It's I, a job. We, oh, I see. Okay. It pays yeah, the rent is, is what it's fun Yeah, is. and I'm slowly getting very sick of it and... Yeah. Would like to slap, yeah, would like to slap a lot of people. So it's getting to that point. You know, I, I've been, you know, somebody was saying to me the other day, how do you feel about your career? Do you feel it was a good career, bad career, whatever? And I said, you know, if I think about it, I never had that feeling ever. I think the only time I actually hated going to work was when I was working at that radio station in Florida. And that was only because the people there were making my life so miserable that it was hard I'd wake you know I'd wake up in the morning and I go oh, god I'm still in fucking Florida you know uh it was the I mean it was a, it was a way to survive I was out of work and I needed the work and they were willing to pay me what I was making before so I said okay I'll do it but that that's the only time I've ever been unhappy with the job I had the rest of the time always been a delight you know so I feel very fortunate in that. But uh, anyway. And uh, let's see here. Tommy Yamaguchi, uh, how are you doing? How is life? Life is fine. It's a nice rainy evening here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing is I, I have a suggestion. You, you were talking to, to Larry Brown about uh, trying to find dates for your um, shows, uh, you know, those special shows. And they were usually on Fridays. And Michael Snyder, you would usually come in and do his movie reviews. You could go and check out the release date of the movie, and you might be able to find the date that way. If if Michael Snyder was was, was what, there. What do you mean a date to do? Um, uh, yeah, if you're trying to find the date when you went out to this like Rooster Teeth Feathers or whatever. You, oh, you I that see. Call. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I know you did that in the interview several days ago, but it was, just, <laughs> but yeah. So so one thing is I you know remember uh, Kevin Meany's, um, uh, you know uh, with uh, Michael Snyder when he was going to right. do it again, do it again. You know, the Sean Connery. Yeah, well that was that was in the studio. Uh, yeah, but it was also on a Friday. So I so I was I, I forgot the date, but I could get it to you. Because the the movie he was reviewing was First Night, with Richard Gere yes, and, right. and Don Connery. So so basically, by what Michael Snyder did is he started doing this impression of Sean Connery from The Untouchables, and that's when Kevin Meany started launching in his "Do it again, do it again, do it again." Yep, yep. So if you're looking for that particular he, well, he, show, he he uh, Michael Snyder tried to do an impression of Sean Connery. And he said, boy, is that good. You know, I can't do Meanie. And Meanie is relentless, or was oh, yeah. relentless. Or was, yeah. And he started going in on Snyder, and it was, do it again, do it again, come on, do it again, do it again, do it again. And he never didn't let up. I mean, this went on for 10 minutes, do it again, do it again. Oh, come on, do it again, do it again. And he would change his pitch and everything. By the end of that, we were, our guts were hurting. I mean, just... Yeah. You know, it's one of those kind of things. And I, I, when I try to do it here, a lot of people are going, what's funny about that? But the way Meany did it, you know, Meany had this relentless thing that he could do. And uh, after that, Snyder hated him, just hated him. And I said, come on, I have a bigger sense of humor about it. Uh, it was one of the funniest bits you've ever had. On yeah, your no, it was one of the funniest work. things that ever happened on my show. And, but and so I, if you're looking for it, that's, you know, find the date of the, the release date of, of First Night and you'll be able to find it. I could sure. have sworn that somewhere along the line I did have a copy of that. But uh, I don't know what happened to it. I may still be out in California for all I know, you know. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of my shows here on cassettes uh, that are in boxes, and um, I have to, I don't know. I'm not going to go through those boxes. My God, <laughs> you know, I haven't got enough years left in life to do that. You know, so anyway, but uh, so um, um, you're right. I mean, but usually Bubs is pretty good about that. You know, well, uh, I, mean, I said if I said to Bubs the show we did at Rooster T Feathers, you didn't go to. What day was it? He could usually come up with it, and I don't think he came up with it in this interview. He yeah. said it was March of. He knew the year. He knew the year. Oh, oh! Somebody just put himself up here as minced meat, and I have a funny feeling that's got to be Brian. 
it, it's got to be Brian. I'm, I'm, yeah, because he's in one of my men's meat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so here comes mince meat. Let's see here. Is that him? Yes, it is. There's mince meat, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Watch it. He's going to expose himself. I can, I can tell. <laughs> I love Kevin Meany. Kevin Meany was so fun. Kevin Meany is one of the funniest people I ever knew. I mean, yeah. he but he what he would do, I would have to ask him to stop. <laughs> you know, he would he would go into something and it was just my gut was hurting. My stomach was hurting from laughing so hard. And he would just keep going with it. it was and it was like repetition was his thing. He would go into a a thing and then repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And man, oh man, I just, one time I said, come on, I'm in pain, would you stop, you know? <laughs> and he, he, oh, he only did it worse, you know? So that was his, uh, his thing. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I always, every now and then I go to Bubs and say, hey, look, I don't know what the date was on this. Do you remember the date on it? You know, because I've been putting together all these new um, things on my, uh, on the uh, Roku channel, a lot of new videos. About the, about thirty new videos I put up there, and I had to have a date. I like you know it asked for a date, and the worst I best I could come up with that one was a year. Um, so uh, you know I've been I sometimes I'll I'll go online. There are places I think I can find out when it was or when it wasn't. I put up an interview I did with uh, Larry King. And it was done by a guy by the name of Vuolo. I'm trying to remember his first name. Art Vuolo. And um, uh, on, I just remembered I have the disc over here I took it from. And on it, it had the date. So that was, I, there were, I did things like that. The hardest part wasn't getting all this stuff onto the channel. It was on filling out all the information about who was on it, when they were on it, and so on. But. So everybody should go over to my, you should buy a Roku and go to my Roku channel. What is that? Uh, Alex, Bennett. Alex Bennett presents, oh my God, I need glasses. Uh, Alex <laughs> Bennett presents a uh, great American music hall. Yeah. O'Farrell. And this was, uh, oh, recess it recession special. Which one? The second? Uh, this is night. This is a, Friday, April twenty sixth, nineteen ninety one. Because if you want to, if you want to see the recession special, I have it up on the, uh, on the uh, 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 Roku channel. You didn't say hi to me at all. Well, hi. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and then this is the South Bay. We're just we're just mince meat. <laughs> yes, we're mince meat. And this one was the. We're the uh, idiots that called later. You're mince meat. I'm top member. This one was the Frost Amphitheater, uh, Stanford University, South Bay Comedy Picnic 5. Uh, this is October 13th, 1991. 1991. Uh, you see, now, I don't know. Was that the first one that I did at the Frost Amphitheater? I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, and this is? Oh, no, 9,000 people showed up for that concert. Is that the wow. one that was 107 degrees? Uh, yes. Dana Gould. I got, oh, my. This is when you used to be able to... Keep, uh, why why did you keep those tickets? What kind of pervert? Because I knew you? I was going to meet you like forty years later, and I wanted to show you. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay, you were pl you, you, you were planning money. seeing me. I see. <laughs> yeah, I thought it. I thought I'd remember these things. I don't. Otherwise, I have Shimmel. Oh, here we go. Here it is, Kevin Meany. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, and where was yeah. that? Where was that? That was Kevin Meany, Cobb's Comedy Club, uh, January fifteenth, nineteen ninety four. Okay, so that that was one of my things. That was uh, Cobb's. So, Alex, when he comes out there, get your pen ready because he's going to want you to sign every one of them. Oh, well, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I have stacks of baseball. Yep, but I'm the only one that if I sign all his tickets, each one of them will be worth less than when I signed before I signed it. <laughs> you know. But uh, anyway. That's why I said that. Now you see, you go to you talk to a guy like Josh here, and, and Josh doesn't know I used to be a big shot, right, in the Bay Area. <laughs> well, yeah. I was aware. Yeah. Um, the Stanford one is the one that we there was a <laughs> my friend's a roller in you know a wheelchair in a wheelchair and uh, he's a roller. Is that the way you, know, you describe a friend uh, who's in a wheelchair? 
Oh my god. That great... Yeah, that's what we call. It. Yeah, you get. I have like a couple friends in wheelchairs, and we call them rollers. That's what you call them. Um, so that's a frost amphitheater. So what we would do is, you know, people wait in line. So mm-hmm. whatever time this was at, you know, people they let people in at 11 o'clock a.m. or something, mm-hmm. and you know the line starts like at you know, nine or 10 a.m. People get first in line, and you know because Frost Amphitheater, you have to go and run into your spots, right? Right. So there's a huge line. So what we would do is we take our my friend in the wheelchair, and we get there like just before the gates open, and we go right up to the front of the line, and then they let oh, us right in. Oh, that, it's always good to have somebody That's in what a I wheelchair. Do with my cane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we were thinking of you know like. Uh, uh, renting out people in wheelchairs to just serve that function, you know, so you get to the front of the line. Yeah, but it works for uh, your shows. What What I was going to do, I was going to rent myself out for people who were afraid of flying because I was actually in a plane crash and I survived it, of course. It was a private plane. And it, but it, it was pretty, you know, I survived a plane crash. So now you're afraid of flying. So what you do is you hire me to go with you because what are the chances it's going to happen again? <laughs> All right? So, makes sense. But that's not, well, anyway, should we move on here? Um, here's, here's what I'm thinking today. Everybody in England was like, Hawking on the uh, on the royal family. Oh, where's Kate? What's happened to Kate? Where is she? Is she oh, here? Is she there? Headlines. She. We don't know what happened to her. Why? Well, the, she edited those pictures. How horrible of her! They're just going after her. So finally, she gets fed up with it. Okay, and she says, "Okay, it turns out I had to wait to tell the kids, I've got cancer." Now I wonder how those people are feeling <laughs> about giving her a bad time, you know. But, I mean, they should have done that all along, however, just to stop any, you know, rumors. So now there are two members of the royal family who have cancer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is, you know. But, uh, what but, kind of cancer is this, eh? I didn't hear it. They didn't they say. They didn't say in the article I read. What? Uh-huh. No, they, they didn't they, say you what know, kind she had. The, the trouble is that the, they are so reluctant to say when they've got something wrong with them that then speculation just goes crazy like it did in this particular case. And if they just go a little step further and just go, well, you know, what it is, it's uh, something, you know, stomach cancer or whatever. Then people can say, okay, well, you know, the chances of that, it, there are good chances on that and all of that. Uh, you just sent a photo of Kevin Meany. Thank you very much, Josh. I'll look at it later uh, on the actual computer, but it was up on my watch. It came up. So. Anyway, she's going through chemotherapy now. Yeah. I didn't send you a photo. I Josh, did, Alex. Josh it's did. So- oh. It's, it's something I did for Kevin. Um, Oh, well, well, Mark, not, excuse me, Mark. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's something I did for him. Um, it, it's bittersweet. Okay. But, well, let me. Uh, I'll look at it later. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't I, see I, it full page yeah, here I know, because I'm but, on the. Although I could probably show it here, but you know. Anyway, the, the, because, yeah, because here it is full size. Yeah. Let me see here. Ah, New York style cheesecake, Meany brand. The cheesecake boat is coming. Okay. One of his best bits. One of his best bits? Okay. I, I don't remember that bit, but, you know. Uh, he had a different bit every other day. He was very good at ad-libbing. Um, but anyway, so um, uh, anyway, she got, she's got she got a little touch of the cancer there, and it's not, uh, you know, who knows how, who knows if what they're doing right now isn't just what they consider with the chemotherapy preventative. In other words, they think they got it, but if they, to make sure they got it, they do the extra little thing. It was like when I had prostate cancer, uh, they did radiation on me. They did five uh, setups of radiation, and then they put the seeds in. And why did they do both? Because if one doesn't completely knock it out, the other one will, but in combination with each other. So she may be going through chemo right now because they want to make sure that they clean it out, you know, that they got every inch of it. 
but uh, you know, it, it's it's um, it's still sad. I mean, I feel bad for. Her. You know. <laughs> what? I agree. Oh, you agree? Okay. Uh, yeah. and, anyway, and uh, uh, Scott Boddicker, everything good in Plano, Texas, by the way? Yes, very nice. Very nice. What was it? Something went on in Plano recently that was political or something. Was there some kind of something going on with Plano? You know, I, I know I that's not the home of Snapple anymore, is it? No, they moved to Frisco. They moved to San Francisco. You don't no, call it Frisco. <laughs> you don't call it Frisco. Frisco, Texas. Oh, oh okay. All right. <laughs> it's the next bordering town up. So they didn't move too far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Now, what is uh, what is? Uh... Oh, okay. Anyway, so anyone who you know wants to rent out Patrick Blazik, for instance, to get to the front of the line, I'm sure he's available, right, Josh? Yeah, he's available. He's he's, he's right. available for rental. Some um, people on the chat, and also I was wondering you last night is uh, where's Jeff been? Where's Jeff been? Well, you know oh, he's yeah. they're down in yeah. Florida. So he, I guess he just doesn't call every night. Yeah, they called a couple of he nights was ago. On Monday, he was on the Monday show. He was on Monday show. Yeah, that that he was. So usually he calls even when he's on vacation. But yeah, we'll, yeah, well, this well it happens. You know, he's entitled. I know. You know, he, <laughs> everyone just make sure we're okay. And plus, he calls, and then we have to spend at least the first ten minutes with him getting him to turn down his audio. <laughs> I know. It still feels so long. Why was still on? Which allows my hour to pass by much faster. Okay. So, Josh, how's everything with you? And uh, does uh, does the prospect of uh, Donald Trump not being able to pay his money and getting his properties repossessed sound like a good idea to you? Yeah. If that's the law, then that's the law, I guess. I did hear he didn't uh, have the money, so... That wasn't really a surprise. Well, wait a minute. I always heard he had money. I heard he was a <laughs> billionaire. Yes. I mean, it's uh, it's a little odd that he couldn't come up with four hundred and you know fifty million dollars, but just the day before or something like that, the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos was able to give away six hundred and fifty million dollars of that. <laughs> 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 and she's never done anything except marry somebody who was rich. No, well, I mean, in no wait a minute. In, 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 in all deference to her, she did create Amazon with him. You no, know, right? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, too hard on her there. I just meant, you know, I mean, I mean, she got about she got about half of their of their estate. No, and you only talk about uh, twenty five to thirty percent. Uh, twenty five to thirty percent. Yeah, I believe so. She didn't take half. She was yeah. generous. Apparently but she was she, she she was part of starting Amazon. You know, she was in yeah, there. Yeah. She was helping. She still got like fifty million. Oh, listen, get, she or no billion. Thirty million. No, billion, 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 billion. Please, you don't even you say million where Bezos is concerned. It starts <laughs> as a it starts at a billion. Well, I mean, you know, I mean. His ex-wife was able to give away, you know, two hundred million more dollars than Trump was even supposed to come up with, and Trump couldn't come up with it. So I mean, yeah. how sad is that? You know. Well, the, now what he's doing he's is he is he is he is uh, wants to do an IPO on Truth Social. Oh, I'm sure. Which he definitely. says is worth. He could get on a IPO on that three billion dollars. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I want to know why. It hasn't yeah. been a terribly successful. I don't know, know that I know one person that's ever used it or does use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, except for Trump, you know. Uh, yeah. But I mean, uh, I don't think it's worth three billion. And I, even if they, let's say they did an IPO, and let's say in the IPO they got three billion dollars, he can't get rid of that money for at least six months. But and if I mean, three billion dollars—that's not even. That would make it a Fortune 500 company right off the bat, I think. I mean, seriously, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I mm -hmm. I work yeah. for a company that's worth like 13 billion dollars, and they're the 170th 
ranked company in the world and the largest coatings and paint manufacturer in the world? <laughs> <laughs> that's not. That's, I don't know. Where yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what he's saying. Okay. Right. But well, if he, I mean, let's say he's able to do an IPO on Monday. Let's just say that. He couldn't yeah. use any of that money. He has to hold on to it for six months. He can't get rid of it. And then when he decides to get rid of it, yeah, if he's got, that. like, let's say, 50% of the stock, let's just say that, all right? Yeah. Um, every time he sells a bit of his stock, the worth of it goes down to the point where yeah, when he gets no, to the no, end of it. works with the laws and all and everything. But also, I mean, if you're doing uh, uh, something like that, I don't think really that all that cash is just like yours to go do whatever you want with immediately if people give you money to run a company they kind of expect the money to go into the company right well I mean, the ipo the ipo is is but, people buying stock in your company yeah right but but, but that's yeah. my point is but if you take all the money and then you go well, spend they, don't, it, they don't want you robbing the company right, of there its, won't be a company right i mean right. I'm just saying, if you invest in me and you give me money, and then I go buy shit with the money that you gave me, it has nothing company. to do with the company. You know, so, yeah. let's say they, know. let's say they As a open. stockholder. I'd be pretty pissed. Uh, yeah, you know. I, I think it'd be funny if they started it off at you know, uh, uh, what, how many, uh, like, uh, one dollar a share, and by the end of the day, it was down to fifty. <laughs> I think he thinks it's know. so expensive because uh, Jimmy Kimmel advertises it for him. Yeah, exactly. That's. Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I. I don't see how that could be. I mean, again, and I mean, I, like I said, I work for a company, and I think their stock shares are around two hundred and sixty dollars a share right now, mm -hmm. which is pretty high. I mean, that's. That's what I'm saying. It. That would be like. It's Fortune two fifty. I mean, I just can't. You know. I don't know. Maybe I'm not making a fair comparison. And, well, I don't think we want to see him skate on this deal. You know, we want, I want to, to begin with, I don't know, she, the uh, Letitia James, who's the Attorney General of the State of New York, has already picked out the places she's going to yeah. repossess. Uh, but, and I don't think Trump Tower is one of them. No. Uh, but it should be. I because, thought I saw it on the list. Oh, well, I'm sure it's on the list, but most people think she would go after probably the Wall Street place, which well, is... Well, they're doing that in the, the, the golf course and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, but I would take away the stuff that would hurt him. She, she can go out of state and grab properties. So yeah. go grab Mar-a-Lago and evict him. <laughs> okay, then do Trump Tower and evict him. You know, I mean, that's what you got to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, I mean, even if he gets some kind of scam to get money i mean it he's still not rich he has to give it to somebody else you know? well he yeah. has to he, and he still uh, owes it what he has to do is he has to appeal this thing and if he doesn't yeah. appeal it then he gives up all you know he's owes yeah i don't i don't think he's gonna money. be able to appeal it i guess i think the window is passed. the window is and through no, on monday monday yeah, yeah. yeah right yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he has. The banks are closed on the weekends, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, you I know, mean, it's kind of interesting to me. ATM. You know, yeah. my, my, my judge in my Thanks case was Judge Ngoran, the same sure. judge who's dealing with this case with him. I imagine, and Ngoran has got to feel great, that of all the people that have tried to take him down, Ngoran was able to. Because this, if, if this will gut him, just gut him. If he doesn't have these properties, it's gonna, you know, drive him nuts. Yeah. And if he, if they take the Westminster Golf Club over in uh, New Jersey, that's where Ivana is buried. So, yeah. so the question is, what do we do with the body? <laughs> if the body's even in there, that could be more classified. Because doctor. I don't know that anybody wants to buy a golf course that has a body buried in it, you know? And that's a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. I mean, it I mean, right up. sounds like he's not going to be able to come up with the funds. So, yeah, I understood that means you can't. He can't appeal. 
and if the clock runs out on the appeal and he can't, then the judgment will stand. So he will owe the yeah. Well, and so 50, because he you know, can't whatever. come up with the money, they will start repossessing right and you know, properties. There's not a lot he can do about it, as far as I know. I mean, I mean, if the government has an order to seize property for the sale, uh, for a debt like that, you know, debt tax, whatever. I mean, I, I don't think there's much you can do to stop it. I mean, if, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what bankruptcy uh, allows someone in that position to do no. or, or whatever, but, you know, bankruptcy would probably be very bad for him, not just, you know, in term, optically, but, you know, there's a lot of consequences. Well, I don't know that it would hurt him with his crowd because they're all bankrupt. So, you know, it's... Uh... Uh, so, yeah, there are certainly <laughs> people that, you know, uh, it wouldn't bother. But, I mean, you know, I don't haven't heard he, too much He appeals about... to people who don't pay their bills. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I haven't heard too much more about Giuliani's situation, but I know that he's basically... Oh, Giuliani, uh, I think he's probably <laughs> living in a uh, yeah. camper somewhere. He's going to be, yeah. you know broke pretty bad and you know i mean i i think that it was pretty hilarious to me that peter navarro went around and ran his mouth and now he's going to be locked up for a couple yeah. of months so that's good for him you know i mean all these people that pulled this bullshit that he talked him into are either well, they, broke or in jail they, they were all super loyal to him not and realizing broke or in jail so the, explain that they don't realize that he mm -hmm. will not show you loyalty back because if he really had loyalty and he had the money he sort of said okay uh, you know Rudy you were good to me here's some money to take care of your legal yeah. problems mm -hmm. that's what I would have done you know if I was a billionaire okay actually I've got a, a an email from Rudy Giuliani you want to hear it yeah <laughs> yeah let me let me pull it up here uh, so the uh, so it's from really Rudy Giuliani, and uh, the uh, subject is dot 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 sentenced to prison, and then in big letters it says Rudy Giuliani Freedom Fund, a memo <laughs> prepared by Rudy Giuliani, former attorney to President Donald J. Trump, friend. That's what all my Republican uh, emails are addressed to his friend. There is no other way to say this. You may be my only hope. The Biden regime is sending. You kind of like Obi Wan ally. Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, the Biden regime is sending a top ally of President Trump to prison. The deep state is hell bent on indicting, arresting, bankrupting, and imprisoning President Trump and his top allies for daring to challenge the corrupt forces that have hijacked our once free republic. And as a lawyer who successfully defended President Trump from impeachment, I am at the top of their list. During these dark times in Biden's America, there is nowhere else to turn to but you, friend. You we are uh, not just battling for my free own oh, freedom and justice. This is about upholding the rights of every citizen who dares to challenge the status quo. If we lose this fight, we lose our republic. Please make a contribution to my legal defense trust, the Rudy Giuliani Freedom Fund, to help me fight for my freedom and justice to, as the deep state tries to jail me for the rest of my life. And then it has different amounts, contributed 25, 50, 100, 250, 500, choose other amounts. And uh, well, there's four, you want me to continue? There's a four no, more paragraphs. Nah, you don't have to go on with it. This but is... anyway, it ends, it ends with, with, with Rudy uh, Giuliani's uh, 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 mugshot in, in black and white. Oh, he couldn't afford <laughs> to send it in color. Yeah, he can. Uh, he couldn't afford to have a uh, a machine say, "Hey, this is going out to uh, uh, you know to to Tom Yamaguchi." So I will say, "Dear Tom," you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I get that from just you know. Yeah, well, they used to send me. Originally, they sent it to to Toss T H O S, Toss. and then and now and I guess as a, you know as they sell mailing lists to to to, uh, to to you know down the line, things get get jumbled and they why, lose the why, name. Why, 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 are, why are we such cruel people here that we're relishing in the unfortunate situation 
of others. Because <laughs> it's Trump. Because they're monsters. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we, you know. Poor Rudy. Poor Rudy. Well, okay. what it does is it has you, Breaks makes you have faith. Heart. Huh? Breaks my fucking heart. Yeah, well, I mean, it, you know, it, it makes you believe that there is such a thing as karma. Yeah. You know? I mean... Well, they got what they... You know, look, they they did these crimes. Uh, they were convicted. They had appeals. They were denied. Navarro took his all the way to the Supreme Court, for example. And, and did, what did the Supreme Court do? They turned down it? Turned, they turned a refuse. Yeah, they, yeah. they just said, nope. They refused to take it, you know, which meant it's done. You yeah. know, when when the when a federal appeals court makes their ruling, if the Supreme Court doesn't take it up, that's that. You hmm. know, so I mean, he asked the Supreme Court, and they denied. So he was done and had to report to to prison or be forcibly dragged there, or else run and be a fugitive of the law. Yeah. You know, so I mean, they had their fair shake. They were convicted in many cases, uh, these cases, by juries of citizens. I mean, you know, I mean, they can put all the nonsense on Fox or Newsmax or whatever these channels are, but it's all bullshit. I mean, this, look, these folks committed, you know, crimes. Now they're going to go to jail. So that's how it works. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we feel I, you know, we we're having a certain Schadenfreude here, so, you know, we feel. That's why I love. That's why I love gay. I, I, I get a bunch from Trump too. <laughs> They're trying to take away my, you know, trying to take away Trump Tower from me. You know, the deep state is conspiring against me, and <laughs> it's just very amusing. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'd be glad if they just repossessed. Trump Tower and got rid of that gold front on it. It's so ugly. You know, New York has better taste than that. You know, and uh, also he put his name on a lot of stuff, you got to realize, you know, and, and that's it was his only business for years was putting his, you know, selling his name, licensing his name out. And uh, so consequently, uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to love seeing them rip that name off of buildings. You know, they they did rip their, his name off of a lot of buildings over on the west side uh, because he had a lot of apartment house buildings there. And it was Trump this and Trump that. And the people who lived there in recent years have asked to be able to take the name Trump off the building because they all, you know, have condos there and they want to sell those condos eventually. And... The, his name on that building lowered the the worth of the building and of the apartments. So, you know, already certain people did take his name off buildings. Yeah, well, they tore down his uh, casino, old casino in, in Atlantic City. Yeah. I think they, they, were, they, they were taking down the, his, I guess it was individual letters. Trump. I can't remember who I, took it over, though. Uh, but he did. He 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 got it from Playboy mm -hmm. because Playboy had to get rid of it because of some problems right. there. And then he took it over. And then he didn't know how to run a casino. You know, running a casino and running anything else is a completely different animal. And he was losing money so badly that he had to dump it for pennies on the dollar. And uh, didn't I don't he have three casinos in Atlantic City. No, he only had one, I think. Yeah, only one. But well, he, he had three casinos that went bankrupt. <laughs> I don't know where the other two well, were. Hmm. I'm trying to think because I don't think he didn't have one in Vegas or. You know. I don't think he had it on the strip. Did he have it off the strip, Alex? I don't think so. No, I don't remember him ever having it. Did he? I know it wasn't on the strip. I know. Wait a minute, uh, 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 Mark. You seem to think he had one somewhere else. The only one I remember that I visited at the, back in the 90s was the one in Atlantic City, and all the casinos there were really trashy, and his was the worst. Really? Mm -hmm. My grandma, I hated that one, Mark. She, he never, she went on the bus. I told this to Alex, and whenever she went on the bus, she never would pick his hotel because she never, you never got a comp lunch. That's a, she used to call him a cheap fuck. <laughs> like, you know, you would get like... 
all those places would, would take the little old ladies. <laughs> on a, the all the, the, the a lot of those casinos would take little old ladies, put them on yeah, a bus, was great, was put them on a bus, take them down to yep. like Atlantic City, and then buy them lunch because that was part buy of the lunch. deal. You always got a lunch at Valley, so I remember that. Yep. Right, you know, such a nice, such a nice buffet. You know, <laughs> she, and, I, I remember them once or twice. They were nice. Oh, yeah. They love that. Uh, so that was, that was part of what you do if you have to. Yes, uh, Charlie, Charlie seems to have found yeah, some Trump information. had two casinos, Trump Plaza and Trump World's Fair, both in Atlantic City. So really? Both went bankrupt. Both went bankrupt. Yeah, but uh, were they in the same building or the same I complex? A, that, I remember them saying, how stupid do you have to be to have uh, different, uh, more than one uh, casino in the same city competing yeah. with each other how can you be so stupid <laughs> that you can own a casino and it loses yeah, money, money yeah. that's something that go, just pales in comparison to anything else i mean how do you lose that kind of mr big business he really knew business lost money running a casino where you're yeah, you know they brought little old ladies and, down yeah, there and yeah. and robbed them of their <laughs> money and then sent them back to new york you know that's the way they operated. Yeah, so so there were two two there, I guess. And he had a third in Gary, Indiana. So he had three casinos go bankrupt. <laughs> That's it. What an amazing man. But he's a great businessman. He's never been a great businessman. <laughs> you know, he has survived basically by licensing out his name. You know, that was the big deal. So, uh, the, the what? Problem. What were you going to say, uh, uh, Brian? No, no, go ahead, Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, when you need to come up with money and things, that's the problem when you don't really have much of a, a product, you know, an actual good mm. that you can sell or, you know, things like that. I mean, or it really, yeah, but, but, when it's just your name, you don't even necessarily have that many assets. But sometimes. casinos, by and large, are a uh, an outfit to print money. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, hell, a card shark, you know, a, a guy playing three card Monty on a street corner on top of a cardboard box walks away with a huge profit at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, you don't lose. Huh? Off one of those would be different. The odds are in your favor. It, it's like Casino. Remember the the movie Casino. Remember the one, the one relative of one of the guys. Yeah, they had the, one of the slots up near the the front aisle way or something that kept winning, and Pacino went to fire the guy because you say what an idiot. You don't put those machines up in the front. That's Trump just letting everybody win or something. You know, how could you lose? How could you lose money? On yeah, no, it, it's it's important. It, it, it's it's yeah. pretty difficult. Go go ask any of the people who own casinos in Vegas. And ask them how much money they lost last year, and watch them st start laughing. Okay, you know. Well, that was my yeah. point. I guess I was just saying that, as his business model is, they don't. He doesn't produce mm -hmm. goods, mm -hmm. or really have assets. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Outside of a few properties, so I mean that's what I'm saying. It's hard to come up with. Right. I mean, a large company that needed to raise money could divest. A certain portion of the company or you know yeah. whatever but he can't really mark had his hand up there there was always a question because of the nature of real estate development mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to disclose where your money where your finance is coming from mm -hmm. so there's always been question about where trump was getting the money from Read into that what you want, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's coming from. It, I think it's coming overseas or for somebody. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, Josh, and you pointed out something very interesting about stocks, but there's also a regulatory. The SEC, they mm. would not let him a mile of an IPO. Okay. It, it's yeah. like, but the other thing is, okay. So if you have something that went bankrupt. It's like a tax shelter in a way that, you know, some, something that fails like that, I'll bet you he figured out a way how to make money on, even on that. And it's not even the sale. But and what, it, he went bankrupt six times. But, yep, six times. But it's interesting because, okay, why did he let those, you, you pointed out the, how do you lose money with a casino? Mm. 
besides give money away, you know, but it's like, what was the purpose? I don't, I don't know. I mean, he may try it up. Yeah. Yeah. He, he probably never had the money to back up the buy. Yeah. Okay. You can buy to buy a casino. Okay. Maybe you have enough money to buy a casino, but then once you bought it, if you don't have any money left, how do you improve the property and how do you, you know, how do you pay off the gamblers? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, something yeah, right yeah. now you're using. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like a high stakes bank. I mean, you do have to have a cash reserve as far as I know. I mean, that's a legit cash reserve, you know, because on any given day, you know, things could happen, you know, big wins or whatever. So, or big sports events or whatever. You're, All I'm saying, it's one thing to buy a casino. It's quite mm -hmm. another to be able to have the money to keep sure. it going. Like that. Right, but what Mark is saying is true. A lot of people go bankrupt for a reason to write so, it off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. how much you know if they shelter themselves but somehow? It's a question of writing it. If writing it off, I mean, he he may have at one point been worth several billion. I think when he said he was worth several billion, that was in his inflated uh, uh, sure a sense of self worth. You know, well, I mean, he I mean, said he claims think. he claims that uh, that uh, Mar-a-Lago is worth a mil billion and a half dollars. Well, I got news for him. Uh, it's not worth a billion and a half. In fact, the 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 assessor in that area who assessed the worth of Mar-a-Lago says it's only worth one hundred and fifty million. Yeah. It's well, funny how he I mean, can claim stuff and then he doesn't turn it over to whoever's supposed to be doing the work and then he I mean, doesn't claim it, right? Oh, but yeah, then, then when he pays taxes, yeah. he's working at a loss. That's the point yeah. is this is the he, – he's obviously not rich. Uh, it's clear. And, I mean, the reason or the, the way is – we know this – is that is what he was convicted of. He was convicted right. of inflating his – assets and net worth were deflating them when it was you know needed but for lying about his uh you know just in like simple terms about net how much worth. money he was worth. well you know who, who came out today was is paying his uh, legal fees yeah the rnc <laughs> now if oh, yeah. i were a republican, republican and i gave money to the rnc i think i'd be a little pissed that you were spending the money the RNC has for an election, okay, on his lawyers. I I cannot imagine the scandal that would have erupted had the DNC paid Bill Clinton. Right. Yeah. You're right. You're so, absolutely he right. Several times that he was accused of things. You know. But guess who's running the RNC right now? Now is his daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law. No, he's correct. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, that's. You know what I mean, this guy? What this guy is going to do is this guy is actually going to ruin the, the Republican Party. I was going to ask you, Alex. What happens if he got hopefully loses? What's going to be left of this? This will be the end of the Republican Party as we know it. I I don't know Trump if it. Saying that Trump gets the money before the candidates get their money. What do you mean, Trump? Everybody running for office as a Republican, they can't get money until after Donald Trump gets his lawyer fees paid for. Yeah. But I mean, what's going to happen to the Republican Party if he loses? And and mm -hmm. the chances are pretty good he's going to lose. I mean, uh, it just doesn't look good for him. It gets worse every day. Yeah. You know. Well, that's I mean, up to the Republicans. Hmm. Well, well right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, it, well, I'm I'd be sad about it, and I think Josh would agree with me on this because I'd hate to see a loyal opposition. You know. Right. Uh, opposition. Well, there's still going to be some kind of opposition always because Americans don't agree on things. But what's going to be sad about it is that the Republican Party of, you know, let's go back just say 10 years or whatever, or really I'd like to go back further than that, but even five, six, seven years ago was at least an organized party that had, you know, their ideas and the things that they wanted. We didn't like them. We didn't agree with them. Some of them were just plain stupid. They would say the same thing. But it was, you know, mainstream, if that's the word you want to use, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now they're just, they just fly outside, you know, the universe. They don't even have a platform now. Yeah. Well, their platform is, we love Trump. 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 You know? Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing yeah. that, you know, I mean, he gets convicted of this crime and, and, and you'll just have dozens and dozens and dozens of the people who make our laws 
most of whom are actually lawyers, you know, will go on television or and whatever and say, well, you know, it's it's. I don't know how you can convince somebody of saying that their, you know, Mar-a-Lago is worth uh, uh, 250 million and he got convicted because it's not worth that. Yeah, everybody knows it's worth whatever somebody will pay for it. How how do they know what it's worth and all that? And they know damn good and well that if I go down and have property taxes or whatever for my house and I try to tell them, oh, my house is only worth ten thousand dollars, you know, and it's probably worth <laughs> yeah, two hundred. Right. I you know I have trouble. Or if I go yeah. and I tell them, oh, you know, my house. If I now next week I want to borrow some money, I want a whole equity line of credit. You know, how much do you own your house? Well, I own hundred thousand dollars. Well, how much is your house worth? Oh, one point five million. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's you uh, know, Tom, Tom Yamaguchi that. had his hand up. Yes, yeah. Tom. Just say earlier, get back to your question: What would happen if we had this only one political party? And well, I, I'm would, not saying I'm not saying we would have one political party, but you well, know, I think the Republicans. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, if if the Republican Party, and I've said this before when the last time I was on, you know, if the Republican Party simply just implodes and and disappears, you'd have only the Democrats left. But but the way our political ecosystem is structured it just favors having a, a, a strong two-party system so I, I would assume that something would come out from the ashes and probably the democrats might split in mm -hmm. one way or another but you know somehow the the people who who were left of the republican party uh just like the Whigs, you know yeah. um you know, would would we agree for actually the many of the Whigs became be, became Republicans. So yeah, yeah. so something. Yeah, no, but vote. I'm just saying that I, you know, I I think that this is kind of the end of the Republican Party. I mean, it may come back as a a new Republican Party, but the current Republican Party, this is they're make they're putting a, making a bad bet in putting all their money on Trump. I mean, that is just insane. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, I mean, just I'd say it was just as insane if if the Democrats put all their money on Biden. You know, in, in much the same fashion. The fact is that that uh, I don't think I. Uh, you're right. You know, if Biden, for instance, were to say, "Oh, I have a lot of legal fees here, and I want the DNC to pay for it," it'd be a hue and outcry. Everybody would be screaming. <laughs> you know. But they're doing yeah, stuff that's I, just I mean, not. I, I just can't imagine if they had paid, like I said, uh, Bill Clinton's lawyers uh, during a uh, Whitewater investigation. Monica Lewinsky. Something along those lines. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean it's, you know, it's crazy. And, and at least he got, before, at least he got the blowjob, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I've said before, and you know, on your question about the the political party, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm. I believe, I'm certain, really, that, you know, in a few more years, for sure, we'll be able to say that 2016 was what historians call a realigning election, which was an election cycle that had such a massive shift that the political landscape, you know, it completely changed. Mm -hmm. and, and in some of these cases, uh, what one side believed now was not true, and what the other side, I mean, everything just gets flip flopped. I mean, nowadays you have Republicans saying things that huge left wing people used to say 30 and 40 years ago that America is in decline and that it's terrible and that it's just awful, and you know, mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is 2016 will be looked at like that, and political scientists and historians from everything that I've read think that we've had about three or four of these mm -hmm. in our history and I think this is the next one you know and to help people understand it you know 1968 for example is what they considered a realigning election where all mm -hmm. the Democrats in the South that used to be solid became Republicans right because yep, the Dixie Democrats crap. went and passed civil rights and pissed them off for lack of a better term and they they changed you know so you know and then after 68 whoever runs for president as a democrat doesn't often carry georgia and texas mm -hmm. and and uh mississippi and th right but prior to that those mm -hmm. were democratic strongholds you know and and a, a lot of them so well, you could say you could say it started in 64 because you remember sure, when, right, when yeah. goldwater 
and that was right after the passage of the of the of the Civil Rights Act of mm -hmm. sixty four. Right. And, and Johnson himself said that you know he may have lost the the you know the Democrats may have lost the South forever. You know, and right. sure I mean, enough, that's, yeah, that's right. the point. Let me let me ask. Let me, let me ask. Twenty yeah. will will end up in that same conversation. Let me let me ask Scott Bodick or something because he lives in Texas as does Charlie. But he lives more in a remote part of Texas than Charlie does. Charlie lives in a metropolitan area. I mean, it, it, Plano's not a huge place, right? It's 350,000. Come yeah. on, that's mincemeat. Come on. Excuse me. Excuse me, Brian. <laughs> Excuse me, Brian. I didn't want to denigrate minced meat. Uh, uh, but but where you are, he, 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 I bet you don't pot to talk politics with your friends, right? People. In no, I, I I don't put out any signs. I don't. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, we, there's people down the street, Republicans, Trump this, Trump that. Yeah, but does anybody have a Biden sign out? Uh, I I did see a Colin Allred out. So. Well, are, what? Colin Allred, he's our he's running for senator against uh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for Texas. But I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a Biden though. They'd probably get ripped out of his front their front lawn. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I'd probably. be afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, 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 there was a time when I was growing up when you just you know you had a a, a, a sign on your front lawn or you had a bumper sticker. Everybody was proud to have those bumper stickers you know hey i'm for trump, i'm for so and so i'm for nixon you know but it was just you, you what was the first thing you did when when there was a political season you slapped something on your bumper right and it stayed there for four years unfortunately even if you won or lost but um you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, I just think that it's, it's not the Republicans are on the wrong end of the of history on this one, and I think. Well, because, like I said, of what we're living in, I mean, uh, you know, twenty years it won't take that long, but I'm just positive that, you know, in twenty years that conversation will be about how that 2016 election cycle realigned our political. Landscape. Yeah, mean, but how did it realign it though? You have Republicans saying defund the FBI. Yeah. I mean, I mean what? I mean, de Republicans saying defund the FBI? That's some 1960s. Oh, how about Republicans? Radical talk. How about yeah. Republicans who are for Putin? Well, you know, yeah. I mean, that, right. that's we insane. Could go on and on, sure. Yeah. These weren't the Republicans. Be better I mean. red than. Uh, better dead than red. Or I mean, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying is when you have, yeah. you know, five, six, seven major issues that the, the parties seem to have like suddenly you blinked your eyes and everything was the opposite, that's a realignment of the political landscape. Yeah, yeah. You know. But, you know, when I, was, uh, when I was a kid, you know, I mean, the Republicans uh, were holding anti-American committee meetings, you know, yeah. and things like that. And we're very anti-Russia. Well, what about today? Is, these guys apparently like uh, like Putin. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean, defunding the FBI. I mean, they want to. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they had that big, I just quickly, just that, I'm going to start the music here, but they had that big thing that happened in Russia today. Yeah. Where the, uh, with the... 40, 60 dead. 60 dead now? 60. That's what I heard, the latest is 60. But, you know, I'm the kind of cynical person who believes that every shot that it might have had something to do with Putin trying to make the Ukrainians look bad, you know? It turns out it may have been some uh, Muslims, but whatever. Anyway, everybody hates Putin, you know. Anyway, uh, hey, listen, this has been really nice. It's about a nice crowd tonight. This is just uh, um, um, makes my heart warm. It, it warms the cockles of my heart or any other Except kind. me and Brian. Except you and Brian. Well, we'll get to you in a second. Thanks, Scott. Good having you here again. And your picture looks great, and the computer probably works terrific. And, uh, Charlie, same to you. Always nice having you here. Josh, a pleasure. And, of course, you know, we don't see uh, Mark Thorner here as often as we should. But when we get him on here, we feel real good about it, as we do with Tom Yamaguchi. Uh, now, so far as, uh, so far as uh, 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 
Brian. Tony is concerned. Oh. Yeah, you know, <laughs> n- nice having you here, Tony. Always uh, yeah. you look sweet. get a haircut. <laughs> I know, I gotta get one now. <laughs> as for, as for <laughs> Brian, mincemeat, and, uh, um, <laughs> and Kevin, <laughs> you know, I think the world of you guys. Come yeah, on. Hurry up, hurry up. Amy shows are starting. Yeah, Come yeah. On. I gotta get the Amy show. Yeah, Everybody, you're 30 seconds over. Give a big wave good. No, we're not. Give a big wave goodbye, okay, everybody? And that's uh, where they, they're going away, okay? And here I am on camera. Let me just uh, close them off here. And uh, by the way, Amy is next. She's here with the uh, intersection. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with our Monday show, which goes out over Facebook and then uh, we'll be back again next uh, Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Have a nice weekend, everybody.